Welcome back. Earlier today, the M3 survey was released. It's a manufacturing shipments, inventories, and order survey, which is created to provide a broad-based monthly look at their current economic condition within the manufacturing sector. We consider on the left-hand side the manufacturing orders in terms of uh, the staple durable goods. Durable goods are those products that are designed to last more than three years, long-term products. Everything from washing machines to aircrafts, computers, uh, we have the manufacturing durable goods. Those are up 8.8%. That's the headline number. That is a year-over-year -year basis from this June to last June. Manufacturing orders in terms of consumer goods, uh, specifically things that we buy, washing machines, up 4.1%. Durable goods, excluding transportation, up only 0 0.4%. Uh, excluding defense, up 108 So if you take out the transportation, not so great. You take out the fence, it actually looks really good. Well, this is how it breaks down. The blue line is the S&P 500 chart. Uh, going back to 2015, the red histogram bars show us manufacturing new orders. This is the headline number. We can see the most recent number is almost up 10% year over year, which is the highest high we've seen going back to mid-2022. Interesting how uh, this downturn coincides with the, the inverted bond market, which we're still in the middle of right now, but we've talked about this in the past. The inverted bond market really uh, did play a lot of havoc on a lot of different economic numbers, including the headline number here. Now, in terms of the consumer goods, uh, we can see here we're just barely positive. Now, the consumer goods, this is definitely the weak part of this sector. Maybe not the weakest, but it's definitely not been strong. Uh, and that is despite the fact that the S&P 500 continues to charge higher and higher. This is durable goods excluding transportation, almost flat, almost nothing, which tells us if you take out transportation, the number looks bad. So logic dictates with the number, this actually looks really good. Uh, with transportation, I should say. It looks like transportation is one of the strong parts of this uh, number. We try to break down these numbers sector by sector so we can consider our own investment accounts and think of, of the stocks that we own. Are they? Do we own the right stocks? Do we own the stocks that seem to coincide with the strong parts of this sector? It looks like transportation is one of the stronger parts of the sector. This is durable goods excluding defense which has been very strong. So while transportation is strong, it looks like the fence is weak. If you take out the fence, this looks like a really good number. In fact, the highest high we've seen in quite a long time. This is how it looks like sector by sector. The blue histogram bar is the new orders number. That's the headline number. The red histogram bar are consumer goods, not so strong. You take out transportation and that's the white histogram bar, barely positive. It looks like transportation is a strong suit, strong parts. You take out the fence and this looks like the number is actually very good. So looks like transportation is really the headline, the, the good part. Defense is not the good part, and then consumer goods also doesn't look so good either. Notice in the past, though, we go back to 2021, interesting to see how excluding defense, excluding transportation, uh, the headline number really was very good across the board. Only the consumer really was not doing very well. We're going to see in the next couple of slides, the consumer side of this number is actually very volatile. When things are good, this looks very good. When things are bad, consumer side looks very bad. This is uh, the transportation sector only in blue. We've talked about how strong that is. The defense only, which is an orange, that's weak. And the white line is the S&P 500. Notice how going back to 2015, as the stock market enjoyed very low interest rates, uh, it seems like the transportation sector was a strong part. And then the defense took over 2018, 2019. Well, the COVID crisis, uh, we saw a big downturn except, except for defense. Defense seems to be pretty immune to uh, stock market, you know, sell offs, probably because federal spending for defense products really does not wane. But again, the transportation sector looks to be the strong part of this number. Now, taking a look at how the data actually breaks down, we see here 8.8%. That's a year-over-year -year basis. That's for the headline number. Uh, durable goods 
Consumer side, up 4.1, not so good. Excluding transportation, barely positive. And excluding defense, it's very strong. So it looks like defense is weak and transportation strong. Let's go back in time to see when we may have seen this pattern in the past. Let's go back to the previous uh, very strong economy before the downturn. Uh, this is 2006. We can see here, March of 06, the headline number up 22%. Consumer goods were strong, up 9.4%, excluding transportation of 12. Now, if you take out transportation, it's only up 12. If you include transportation, it's up 22. Looks like transportation does very well during strong economies, excluding defense, up 20%. But defense, we really can't predict because that has a lot of geopolitical ramifications. But take a look to see 2007, 2008. All of a sudden, look at the consumer side. It was down 23%, 25%, down 27%. In fact, notice if you go, if you start December of 07 and we move forward in time, just to let's say December of 08, the year 2008, uh, we saw a downturn. But even let's let's even not even take that much. Uh, room. Let's just say December of 07 to March of 08. Look what really fell. The headline number 6.6% down to 2.3. The consumer side down negative 6 to negative 12. Excluding transportation was actually quite strong 3 to 4.9. And excluding defense down five, um, 500 basis points, 5% or so. So the lesson from this is look at the consumer side. The consumer seems to be the most sensitive when we have downturns. And of course, when we came out of that crisis, uh, let's start here, December of 09, and we move forward just a few months. We went down negative 7.7%, the headline number up to 22, uh, from positive 2 to 29. Well, Consumer side was resilient or it improved, but then again, everything improved. I think the lesson from this is that when we have any sort of fear out there of a recession, it seems that the consumer is really brought down first. Uh, and that's what we see right now. The consumer side of durable goods up only 4.1%. If you take the headline number, it's up almost 9%. If you take out the fence, it's up 11%. So, uh, we're going to keep a special eye on this, and we're going to see if the next couple of months, especially on the consumer side, think about those stocks that may be correlated to consumer durable goods. Washing machines are made by Maytag and Whirlpool, computers, things of that nature. Let's look to see how those uh, those stocks perform, and maybe we can draw some correlation to this number. We hope this has been helpful. We look forward to seeing you back soon.